Hi there and welcome to this day in history for September 28th. September 28th is the 271st day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 272nd in leap years with 94 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is cacophony. Cacophony is a noun that means a harsh or jarring sound. <laughs> Dissonance, harshness in the sound of words or phrases. Cacophony can also mean an incongruous or chaotic mixture or a striking combination like a cacophony of color or a cacophony of smells. The word cacophony comes to us from Greek words. The prefix kak, which comes from kakos, which means bad, and phony, which means sound, so bad sound, cacophony. As you can see, its meaning has evolved to include other senses as well. First known use of the word cacophony is around 1656, cacophony. And with that, this is the birthday of English businessman and plumber Thomas Crapper, born September 28, 1836. He made significant improvements in something that most of us don't spend a lot of time thinking about, unless we're a plumber. <laughs> Bathroom technology. He held nine patents, including one for the floating ball cock, which allows us to flush our toilets without getting overflowed or backflowed. And he also improved the S-bend plumbing by making it more of a U-bend. Mr. Crapper lived to the age of 73. On September 28, 1889, the General Conference on Weights and Measures, whose acronym is CGPM, defined the length of a meter. It seems that prior to standardization, any given country might have its own units of measurement. This being the case, a meter in England might be different from a meter in France, which might be different from a meter in Austria or Japan. Everyone's measures of distance and land area then would be different if everyone's meter was a different length, even if it was just a little bit different. So this group, the CGPM, got together and one of the first things they did was to standardize the length of the meter. And to help them with this, they created what's called a prototype meter bar, the proctor by which all meters would be measured going forward. This is the birthday of American television host Ed Sullivan, born September 28, 1901. He's best known for hosting the Ed Sullivan Show, a variety show that ran on Sunday evenings on television. You were likely to see just about anything on there. <laughs> the guy who would spin the plates, ventriloquist acts, puppet shows, comedians. One, One could, could also see popular or up and coming music groups and artists on the Ed Sullivan show. He had the likes of Elvis Presley, the Supremes, the Beach Boys, and so on. So many performers either got their big break there or appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show early in their career. He brought the Beatles to America. <laughs> All sorts of entertainment on the Ed Sullivan Show, which ran from 1948 to 1971. Ed Sullivan lived to the age of 73. On September 28th in the year 1918, a parade to sell war bonds resulted in a furthering of the epidemic of the Spanish flu and it caused mass death in Philadelphia. It was quite something. The same people who pushed for the war bond parade ended up being the same people who were trying to help with the epidemic later on. On September 28, 1928, Alexander Fleming noticed a bacteria-killing mold in his laboratory, ultimately leading to the discovery of what would later come to be known as penicillin. This is the birthday of American guitarist Emmett Chapman, born September 28, 1935. He's the inventor of an electric stringed musical instrument called a Chapman stick. If you've never heard someone play a Chapman stick or even heard of a Chapman stick, 
I've included a link for a sample of the kind of sound one can hear from a Chapman stick. Amazing instrument. They do make astonishing music. Emmett Chapman passed in 2021 at the age of 85. The Beatles began playing together in about 1960. John and Cynthia Lennon married in 1962. Their son Julian was born the following year, 1963. Ed Sullivan brought the Beatles over to America to be on his show in 1964. John met Yoko Ono in 1966, left Cynthia for Yoko in 1968. Dear Paul McCartney, bless him, was worried about little Julian Lennon, who will have been about five years old at the time. Paul went out to the Lennon home in Weybridge to see Cynthia and Julian, especially Julian, to see how they were doing. On the way to Weybridge, Paul wrote a song for Julian, originally titled Hey Jules, as a comfort and encouragement to the little boy. Afterward, he changed it to Hey Jude, as that seemed to flow better lyrically. The song was recorded and released as a non-album single in August of 1968. Hey Jude hit the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100 on September 28th. 1968, where it would remain for nine weeks. Nine weeks. Hey Jude by the Beatles. Link in the description. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That playlist lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that's called No Really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, BitChute, and Odyssey. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Oh, get your microphone. <laughs> okay. Hello. <laughs> okay. Cacophony is a sound. <laughs> Cacophony is a noun that... I'm going to have to look that up. Mm. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> All righty. You got to read it the right way. Let's start over. <laughs> it's 8 o'clock, so all of the reminders are going to be dinging. I forgot to turn those off. Okay, stop it. Don't alienate people who can be helpful to you. Flinging happiness all over the place. All right. Back to work. I think we got it this time.